Hey everybody, Jason Ryan with another episode of ThreatWise TV. And today I'm joined by Rajat Gulati, one of our product managers. Rajat, thanks for being here, Mud. Uh, and today we're talking about our SAL, Security Analytics and Logging Service. So this has got a couple of benefits. Number one, it provides a, another repository for a much broader and deeper and bigger level of log uh, repository, right? A log space to, to store your logs and provides the stealth watch functionality to analyze those logs to look for anomalies and behaviors and, and, and see when you see some uh, suspicious type of behaviors or connections happening within your own firewall log set. So obviously a big data analytic kind of style uh, movement that we're that we're offering now, both on prem and as a cloud based service. So Rajat, did I get all of that right? Uh, did I miss anything about what we're launching here with uh, with the new firewall launch? You got it all right, Jason. It's a very exciting time because we're consolidating all of your logs in one place and logs have a fantastic story. So happy to introduce this to all of your viewers. Well, show us a little bit about what it looks like from a, a technical perspective and, and make sure that everybody understands exactly where their data is, because I know that's a, uh, a issue of concern for everybody out there. So show us what the solution looks like when it maps out. Absolutely. So, so Jason, as most of your viewers know, Cisco has, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of firewall data that is generated by our firewall devices, whether it's the adaptive security appliance or ASA or the Firepower next generation firewall devices. And so really what we've done is we've allowed our firewall users to use either a hosted service, which obviously comes with a cloud data storage or an on-prem data store to upload all of this log information and aggregate it across all the Cisco firewalls in one logical storage. Now, there are a tremendous amount of advantages to this. One is it really helps IT. It, it doesn't need them to now go from one store to the other or one UI to the other. They can just aggregate all of that rich information in one place, one place to view, to troubleshoot, et cetera. But then it also has a, another really great advantage it provides all of this data and feeds it into Cisco's secure analytics portfolio. So StealthWatch Cloud or StealthWatch Enterprise to analyze this data for baselining what's happening in your network and alert the users whenever there's any anomaly from this baseline, right? So really it's the, the, the data feeding into these two data stores and being analyzed for behavioral threat detections. But in addition, what we've done, and these arrows in green indicate that, we provided API level integration back to the, uh, the firewall device managers. So whether it's the cloud management through Cisco Defense Orchestrator or the on-prem management through the Firepower Management Center, via APIs, customers can actually get all of this context back into their managers and they don't need to actually go and learn a new UI or a new tool to try and visualize all this data. It's available back to them in their management consoles. Excellent. So we're we're adding space, obviously, for the logging. We are streamlining the IT operations and providing the additional security that you get when StealthWatch is actually analyzing these logs. So I love all of those benefits. Definitely a, a big need for our firewall customer base. Show us what it looks like when uh, when they're actually using this. All right. So I always start here with the Cisco Defense or the secure sign-on, right? The Cisco Secure Sign-on, which basically is a SecureX application portal where you come into to go to all your devices. And starting off with Cisco Defense Orchestrator, I already launched that for you. And what I have here, what I'm showing you right here is a consolidated view of your cloud data store, logging your data and providing a single view of that data, whether it's data coming from your ESA devices or your FTD devices, and by the way, this is your entire syslog, which is logging into this data store, right? So this is a view of all of your data. And you have a tremendous amount of capabilities here through filters. You can go ahead and search for a particular or a combination of objects here. So that you can drill down and IT folks really love this. This along with the live view of showing you the data as and when it is generated from your firewall, giving you that view immediately, is something that ID folks really like. They get the level of visibility that they really need, right? So this is really, really powerful. But what's the icing on the cake and really the main differentiator is when we actually come into the security analytics portion. And what I'm gonna show you now is really all of this richness 
in your firewall data, whether it's coming from your FTD or ASA devices, is run through the behavioral threat detection algorithms of StealthWatch Cloud. And what that allows you to do is, firstly, it allows you to analyze all of your firewall data in one place, and it allows you to correlate that data with data coming from your, your internal network. So maybe you know it's a switch to a router or a switch to an endpoint, all of those connections, as well as your public cloud logs, whether it's Azure, AWS, and GCP, all of that data, raw data gets put into one bucket and it's this detective, the Stealthwatch Cloud Detective comes and says, all right, let me see what all the data is telling me. Let me baseline your network so that I can then start alerting you on all of this, you know, what, what is what is the data telling you? And by the way, these alerts, when customers do all of this correlation, it's magic because it tells you uh, malicious activity going on in network, which your individual point products would not have been able to tell you, but because you're aggregating all of that data in one place, it can tell you that something malicious is happening in the network. Absolutely. So that's the increased security aspect here of the on the cloud service that we're offering. It's beautiful. Yes. One last thing I want to say before I go to the on-prem demo is via APIs, right? Uh, you can actually connect all of these alerts back to your security operations center tool. So if you're using a same or if you're using some other way, you know, emails or some Slack channel to monitor all of your alerts, you can go ahead and set up a API to send all of these alerts to your SIM. So really what it does is it optimizes your security operations center by reducing the amount of configuration, noise, upkeep needed in your SOC. It'll basically filter out all of the noise and only provide the signal back to your SOC tools so that you can actually concentrate on actionable security alerts. Excellent. Yeah, this is one of the questions I was going to ask is what about, how does this interact with our SIM solutions that are out there? And here you see your ability to communicate with them on a selective basis. So that's great. Absolutely. Now, there's another thing that I just want to touch upon is all of these alerts feed back into SecureX. So any alert that actually comes in your Stealthwatch Cloud Portal will feed back into SecureX. And in SecureX, as you know, you're aggregating alerts from all different point products, right? Whether it's uh, endpoint security or maybe from network security or email security. So all of this gets aggregated. These are actually producing the alerts that make the efficacy of SecureX and your soft tools better, right? Anyway, enough on this. I'm really excited to show you the on-prem data store because that's really magical as well, Jason. Okay, so we're shifting gears now to the on-prem based solution. Absolutely. So I'm really, really excited to tell you about the on-prem data store because this is an innovation which is very recent and it's giving our customers an ability to log at a much higher scale than what they can today through Cisco products, through the Firepower Management Console. It's actually supporting about 10,000, sorry, 100,000 events per second sustained. Of course, you can have peaks, but that's a lot of data and you can look back in this data for up to 30 to 40 days. So, and, and you know, 50, 60, 90 days. So there's a lot of volume of data available here. I'm going to start off in the Firepower Management Console. And one of the things that we heard is it's extremely difficult for us to configure our firewalls to send data to for logging. So we've provided a wizard right here in the uh, in the Firepower Management Console. So when you click on the wizard, literally in two or three steps, I can go ahead and set up. Okay, this is the IP address that I want for remote query APIs. This is the IP address that I want for uh, for sending my logs to. And I just go and set it up. Once I set this up, I don't need to worry about it. The logs are going directly from our firewalls to this external data store. And I can use the Firepower Management Console and my tooling to actually look at that data as if it was sitting natively in the Firepower Management Console. So once I set all of this up, I could go ahead and then look at these events, right? So I'll cross launch, uh, I'll go into this event viewer and you actually see all of these events are pouring in here. By default, the system is actually trying to figure out based on you know, your search criteria and your time frame whether these events should be pulled from your onboard Firepower Management Console storage, you know, through the local storage, or should they be pulled from the extended storage? So under auto mode, they can be pulled from anywhere, but I can actually go and specify where this comes from. Now, what this really does, Jason, is it allows our customers to remain in the Firepower Management Console tooling dashboard widgets that they've really known, they've got used to, 
but attach on this large data store that they can actually use for pulling data from the APIs and just aggregating all of that in their Firepower Management Console. So same perspective, just a whole lot more depth to it. Absolutely, same perspective, a whole lot more depth and a whole lot, whole lot more look back because oftentimes, you know, you, you'll have a security incident, you want to go back 30 days to look at, okay, this particular IP address or this particular domain, what did it do? And you don't have that level of retention period today, but with this, you get that large amount of retention period and consolidate it for ASA and FTD devices, right? So one of the, okay. one of the things that I really like to show is when, I, when, I, when I'm in this place, I can actually go and cross launch into that data store directly, right? So I right clicked on an initiator IP and I say, take me to the actual data where this data is. So you see, I've got that initiator IP here and it's visualizing for me for this particular initiator IP, this is the amount of data I've seen. I've seen about 3,000 in the last hour. I've seen about 3,000 connections for this IP. But obviously, I can, you know, this is a very robust store. I can actually go ahead and do any sort of search. I can specify not only for the last hour, I want to see for the last maybe seven days all the data that's available in the data store. And this is going to aggregate it again for all of your FTD, your FTD data plane, your ASA logs, and show you a consolidated view of all of your data in the data store. You don't have to come here, right? You see right here, you have almost about 3 billion events in the last seven days that are in the data store, it's showing you all of your intrusion events, your malware events, your connection events, and you can go ahead and just search for whatever you want in general ledger. All right, well, I love what I'm seeing here. Like I said, we're streamlining IT operations, adding additional space and giving you a better view of the history of your log information and adding that additional security with the analysis that StealthWatch provides. So it's a beautiful solution. I really love seeing this for our firewall customers here. If you want to learn a little bit more about this technology, you can check it out at cisco.com slash go slash SAL, stands for Security Analytics and Logging. And always, we've always got additional ThreatWise TV videos. Be sure to check back at our webpage there for even more information about this particular launch and how workload security is working with NextGen Firewall in a much more cohesive fashion these days. So check those out at cisco.com slash go slash ThreatWise. So for now, I've been Jason Wright. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of ThreatWise TV.